Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another video here on Jacob's Aquarium. Today I have a plant guide for you guys and we'll be talking about tiger lotus plants. So as with every plant guide, we'll be talking about how this plant grows, the color you can expect, and how to propagate it. But first, before we get to that, I just wanted to say that I've been growing tiger lotus plants for about three years now, and I have to say they are one of the most beautiful plants that I grow. Um, I love the color of the leaves once the leaves reach the top of, a, of an aquarium or a pond in my case, you know, because once the sunlight really has a chance to hit these leaves, they develop this really beautiful speckled coloration that just is so eye-catching. And especially if you do grow these plants in a pond, they'll definitely be a nice conversation piece whenever somebody comes over to look at your pond because I'm telling you guys, the colors that develop from the leaves of this plant is just so beautiful. And I think, um, you, you know, you, you can't really avoid it. You can't really not see it. <laughs> so that's one thing I just really like about tiger lotus plants. And another thing before we get into you know what this plant is all about I just love how easy these plants are to grow they're they're not challenging at all uh, they don't really require co2 they don't really require too many nutrients they don't even re really require great lighting they just need a little bit of light you can probably rely on the waste from your fish to give this plant its nutrients that it needs and that's pretty much it this plant is so easy to grow and you know, so the combination of it being a really beautiful plant and it being really easy to grow just makes it a great addition to any planted aquarium or pond. <laughs> so first, let's talk about the color of this plant. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this plant develops really nice coloration, but it's only till the leaves reach the surface of your aquarium or your pond where you'll really start to see those really nice colors. Uh, when the leaves are below the water, you can expect more of like a greenish, maybe a little bit of reddish uh, tint to the leaves and a little bit of speckled coloration, but nothing compared to once those leaves reach the surface of your aquarium. Another cool thing about tiger lotus plants, something that you won't really see, but uh, you'll see if you pull the plants out of your aquarium, is the purple roots. I don't know what it is about this plant, but once this plant really establishes itself and grows a really nice root system, uh, if you ever have the chance to take a, this plant out of your aquarium, uh, you'll notice that the roots are purple and it's so crazy. And when I first saw that, I was like, man, I wish, you know, this is one of the, the, the few, the rare times that I wish actually that this plant grew with an exposed root system. <laughs> because a lot of us, when we grow stem plants, uh, foreground plants, we don't like to see the roots. You know, we like the roots to be where they're supposed to be, down in the substrate. But in this case, because the roots have a nice purple coloration, it would be nice if this plant grew as an exposed root system, kind of like an Anubias plant, you know, a little bit like that, like a rhizome plant, you know. I just was really taken back when I when I saw that for the first time. So as far as color, that's what you can expect with tiger lotus plants. All right, next, let's talk about how to propagate this plant. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that I am not extremely experienced with tiger lotus plants, but just based on the three years that I've been growing them, I know how to propagate them. Uh, the way that I do it. There might be some other methods out there that I don't know of, so bear with me here, okay? So the way that I propagate tiger lotus plants is I buy them as a bulb first, I let them sprout and grow, and then I remove that sprout from the bulb. Uh, the bulb actually will will shoot out this little uh, root or stem or you know whatever you want to call it, and it'll shoot out a little stem that's probably around an inch, inch and a half long, before it finally starts to develop an, another tiger lotus plant. It doesn't grow another bulb, but it just grows the actual tiger lotus plant with the root system. Uh, kind of like, it, it, it kind of looks like an Amazon sword, you know, growth structure, where it, it's, it, or like a rosette plant, I guess you can actually say, where it has the plant growing and then the root structure, you know, but it's it's attached to the bulb with a, with a inch and a half uh, a small stem, you know? Um, so what I do is I just remove that after the plant has had a chance to grow and then I replant the bulb back into my substrate and believe it or not the bulb will grow a whole nother stem and tiger lotus plant again and I've just been repeating that cycle over and over and over again and I've been able to grow my own tiger lotus plants that way which is great from a business standpoint because I don't have to buy them from my suppliers anymore 
Um, and for some reason, I don't know what it is, but Tiger Lily's plants are really expensive, even wholesale price for businesses. So that's that's really saving me a lot of money as far as you know keeping my business going. Um, so that's how I propagate tiger lotus plants, but as I said, there might be some other methods out there that I'm just not familiar with yet. All right, last but not least, let's talk about how to grow this plant. So it really depends on what type of tiger lotus plant you buy. And what I mean by that is it depends on if you buy a bulb or if you buy a plant that's been separated from a bulb. So I'll, I'll discuss the bulb first. If you buy the tiger lotus plant as a bulb, what you want to do is plant the bulb into your substrate halfway um, well, I shouldn't say halfway in your substrate, that wouldn't make any sense. But you want to plant the bulb so that it's exposed a little bit from your substrate. You don't want to bury the bulb entirely. Although I will say that I've done that and I've still grown tiger lotus plants like crazy. So you could give that a try, but as far as I know, a lot of people recommend that you don't do that because the bulb could rot and just, you know, fade away. Um, people say that you need to expose this bulb to a little bit of sunlight. So that's why I recommend partially inserting it into your substrate. Just leave a little bit exposed so that bulb can get some nice sunlight. And pretty much after that, as I said in the beginning of the video, um, the bulb will shoot out a little stem and grow a whole nother tiger lotus plant. And that's pretty much all you gotta do. Uh, being that, you know, if you, if you grow a tiger lotus plant from a bulb and the bulb really doesn't establish a root system, it can't anchor itself into the substrate, this is not the plant that you want to grow with goldfish or cichlids or any fish that likes to dig in your substrate because it'll only uproot the bulb and it'll just take so long to grow a tiger lotus plant. It really will. Or the, the bulb just won't grow at all because it's being moved around so, so much, you know? So this is really the plant. This plant is best grown with fish that just won't disturb it. Now, if you receive a tiger lotus plant with an already established root system separated from the bulb, it's very, very simple. All you gotta do is plant the, the, the tiger lotus plant, uh, leaving the, the part that's not the root system exposed. I mean, I don't know how else to say it because, because that, that's really all you gotta do. Uh, you, you shouldn't bury the tiger lotus plant beyond where the roots actually end. You wanna uh, just bury the root system and leave the rest of the plant exposed. And that's pretty much all you gotta do. And as far as nutrient goes and sunlight, I, I think I already talked about this in the video. I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, guys, but this plant is very, very easy to grow. Something I will add, though, is that you don't wanna grow this plant with any foreground plants because it does tend to block a lot of light coming into your aquarium um, once uh, those leaves reach the top of your aquarium. Um, similar to like banana plants and dwarf aquarium lilies, they're just not the plants to grow with, with foreground plants that require a lot of uh, good light, you know? Uh, so if you want to grow this plant with foreground plants, I would suggest plants like Anubias, um, maybe some dwarf uh, pennywort, you know? Uh, stuff that really doesn't need a lot of light because, you know, the tiger lotus plant leaves, they don't really get that big, so they don't block a lot of light. But if you are growing a lot of tiger lotus plants in your tank, it's gonna block a lot of light. So, and they block light period. <laughs> so I would just say to minimize the risk of wasting your money uh, and you know your foreground plants just fading away because they're not getting the light that they need, uh, just grow tiger lotus plants with really, really low demanding plants as far as lighting goes. Uh, pretty much plants that are similar to the growth, the growth needs and health requirements that uh, a tiger lotus plant needs. So that's pretty much it for this plant guide. If you'd like to buy a tiger lotus plant, they're available right now on my website, jacobsaquarium.com for the most affordable price on the internet. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to check me out on social media. All my social media links will be in the description below. Hope you guys are having a great day, night, morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have fun with your tanks and I will see you next time.